It's been a really wild few weeks. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind and I just don't know how much more I can take of this before I lose my mind. <laughs> Welcome back! Okay, so you guys know that I'm not stable. <laughs> I have been down this road before. I have talked about this before. I have made full videos about this before. And I don't know the word for it. So for a lack of better term, I use psychic. Now, I don't know if that's the appropriate word because I'm not predicting the future, but there's too many. It's not a coincidence. It can't be a coincidence because nobody else, except maybe Tana, experiences this on the level that I do. It's never stopped for sure, but lately it's been so overwhelming. And it all started again with when a, my medium reached out to me. And then from there, it set off this domino effect of everything just one after another. Let me start from the beginning. I know that this means something, but I don't know what it is. And if anybody has any type of recommendation or suggestion or explanation of why this is happening to me ever, but specifically now, and what it could possibly mean, and what I do with it, and if it even matters at all, it would be so much appreciated. Or you could also say, what's wrong with you? None of this matters. <laughs> Make sure to like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. If this is your first time here, I'm so sorry, but hi, I'm Gabby. Nice to meet you. And real quick before we get into it, I am so blessed this week to have a sponsor. Thank you so much to Honey. Some of you may remember that I've worked with Honey in the past. Honey is an online shopping tool that automatically searches the entire internet for the best promo codes available. It works on over 30,000 sites such as Macy's, Target, Walmart, Ulta, Sephora, which is amazing all year round, but especially during the holiday season. You can buy books, clothes, shoes, makeup, jewelry, a whole bunch of stuff, and save as much money as possible. And speaking of the holidays, as you can see, I was shopping and I was getting some toys that are going to be donated to Toys for Tots, and because I save so much money, I can get even more toys. It's absolutely free, of course, and it only takes two clicks to install, so head on over to joinhoney.com slash Gabby. Obviously, the link will be down below. And use Honey for all of your online shopping this holiday season. Seriously, there's no reason not to. If you don't use it, you're literally leaving money on the table. Okay, back to regular programming. This medium reached out to me, the same medium who warned me about my last two ex-boyfriends and told me all the spooky stuff about my, my grandma. I'll link it below. But if you're not familiar with my medium, she's bonkers. So I wake up one morning. Oh, where should I start with this story? Because it's also convoluted. I followed a celebrity on Instagram who I've known of for years, but just never followed them before. And I followed them on Instagram. Now, I choose to follow this person, and I kid you not, after I follow this celebrity on Instagram for the first time, Monraya, which is a dating app for celebrities. <laughs> I can't take myself seriously tonight. And the day after I followed this person, I matched their brother on a dating app. Didn't notice it was them at first because it doesn't have last names. And then I figured it out later because I went to their Instagram and it said followed by this person. And then I was like, oh, that's who this is. So then we start talking and we're talking all day, nonstop for like two days. So then I go to sleep, I wake up and I have a message from this medium that says, does this name mean anything to you? And I was like, okay. Fine. So then I go into the gym and I'm saying this person's name and I look up at the TV and it's this other celebrity who has the same name that she said and that this person is. To summarize, I follow this celebrity on Instagram, match with brother on Raya, get a message from my medium of his name. And then as I'm talking about it, I look up and his name is on the screen. Same day, I'm at the gym. I'm talking about labels that I would want to sign to and artists who influence me because my trainer was asking me if I planned on signing to a label. So I say, I love Fueled by Ramen because they have one of my all time favorite artists, Panic at the Disco. And as I said that, High Hope started playing. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> then, I'm texting my friend and we're talking about what genre I am because he's, it's a long story. And he said, well, you could just go with alternative. And I said, well, I don't really want to go with alternative because sometimes people, when they go alternative, people start saying, no, you're not alternative. And then I use the example of Halsey calling herself alternative. And then a lot of people saying, you're not alternative, you're just pop and it's a whole thing. And as I said that, Halsey started playing. <laughs> this is all the same day within a time frame of moments. This is just the beginning, my friends. Same friend. I bring him as my date to the streamies. He's just a friend. Sorry to disappoint everybody. His Instagram was very excited thinking we were engaged. That day, my friend told me that he had just started dating my other friend. And I was like, oh, tight. She's so cool. I really like her for you. She's a dope girl. So then we go to this event 
she's there. She comes up to me, and I'm with this guy that she's now dating, and she's like, hey, it's so good to see you. By the way, I just thought I should tell you, this person tried to set me up with your ex-boyfriend. And I was like, okay, cool, go ahead. <laughs> So here's where I think it's crazy. So I'm with this guy as my date and he tells me that he's dating this girl and then that girl comes up to me and says somebody just tried to set her up with somebody that I used to date. Does that make sense and does anybody else think that's mind-blowing slash bonkers? No? Okay, just me moving on. Okay, so I work out at this gym and I pay for my gym membership but somebody was telling me very recently about this other gym, Equinox, that has an influencer program and basically you get a free gym membership and you post about going to that gym and whatever. And I don't know why I was in this class doing jumping jacks with a weighted bar. <laughs> I was just randomly thinking about this influencer program at this other gym and I was thinking, I feel like I wouldn't really want to do... I can stop that. I feel like I wouldn't really want to do that because if I'm constantly promoting where I am, if a lot of people came and joined the gym because of me, then I feel like I would be insecure to work out in front of all those people. Does that make sense? No? But anyway, I'm in this class and I'm for probably a solid 20 minutes thinking about this other gym having an influencer program. I'm leaving this class and this guy comes up and introduces himself to me and he's like, hey, I'm the general manager. You're Gabby, right? And I was like, yeah. And he said, I just wanted to talk to you about our influencer program program. And then he goes, we do it with, I guess I shouldn't say the name of the other YouTuber, but it's another YouTuber who I've never met personally, but he names her by name. <sighs> I open up my Twitter. I check my verified tab. I kid you not, this girl, I've never had an interaction with, I've never talked. She followed me on Twitter. Same person. So again, same day, same within moments, this guy, oh, I don't need to say it again. You guys get it. This one's so random, but Okay, my nine-year-old brother has a cell phone. He's nine years old. He never texts me back. I swear to God. He never f***ing answers me. I'll prove it. I'm getting my new phone tomorrow. Everybody calm down. Like, every once in a while, he'll send me 400 stickers or emojis. But look, I text him. He does not respond because he's nine and he doesn't care about me. I was watching a Nicki Minaj interview. Finally click on this Nicki Minaj interview after I've seen it in my feed a thousand times. I was like, you know, I'm going to click it and I'm going to watch it. So I click it. And as soon as I start watching this mother f interview Sammy out of nowhere text me this it gets worse the other day I was at the doctor's office getting my nose injections if you guys don't know about my nose injections I'll link it below and then Joey Graceffa tweeted at me a joke about my nose as I have a needle in my nose just popping in because as I'm editing this clip about Joey Graceffa. I get a text message from Joey Graceffa, which wouldn't be that weird if, you know, I talk to him every single minute of every day. This. Everyone who wanted Streamy got this drawing. This has been in Matt Stefanina's apartment since the Streamies, which was weeks ago. Yesterday, I go to Matt's. We're hanging out, and he's like, oh, by the way, I still have your picture. So I get this picture. Then, I take it. I'm leaving Matt's apartment. I open up my freaking Instagram, and this is the first thing on my feed. <sighs> this one is probably the one that I, okay. So as this is all happening, the trainer that I was with on the first day, since he was there the first day all this stuff was happening, I started texting him as more stuff was happening. And then he got sucked into my time warp. He got sucked in to my weird parallel universe synchronicities nightmare. And this is where it started. Oh! So in my monster music video, by the way, if you haven't seen it, Please go watch it. I'll link it below and I'll leave it as a card. I was wearing an Elvis Presley shirt. It was his mugshot. Now, I didn't know what his mugshot was from, but I wore the Elvis Presley shirt because Elvis Presley was my grandma's favorite musician. Now, in the video, spoiler alert, but if you haven't watched it by now, sorry, I poured gasoline all over myself and then set myself on fire. Somebody commented underneath, I can't help but notice Gabby poured gasoline on herself. She's wearing a shirt of Elvis Presley's mugshot from when he got arrested at a gas station. And I was like, okay, whoa, that's weird. So I text my trainer and I'm like, yo, this is so weird. And he was like, okay, I think now you're just reaching for stuff. And I was like, no, if you don't think that's weird, you're weird. And then as we're talking about this stupid Elvis Presley shirt, I open up my Instagram and it's Lucy Hale wearing an Elvis t-shirt. How many times have you seen Elvis t-shirts? And then he texts me. <laughs> He was in a swap meet and he passed by this <laughs> as we were talking about it. 
<laughs> and the next day, he went to a thing and there was an Elvis impersonator. So he's in this now. So then we're at the gym and we're talking about how crazy it was with all the Elvis things and all the weird synchronicities. And he was like, I don't want to be a part of this. I, I was happy. I was perfectly happy without this. But he brought, oh my God, he had a box of pastries. The box has a very specific look. It's like this old fashioned box with yellow on the side and black and white pictures, like old timey pictures on it. And I was like, what is this? And he's like, oh my God, you've never had this bakery. It's so amazing. I was like, I've never even heard of it. I've never seen it. I'm tasting it. I was like, oh my God, this is so good. And he's like, I can't believe you've never had this before. You gotta go and get it hot sometime. It's so amazing. And I was like, how have I never heard of this place before? I've never even seen it. So we have this conversation and then I leave. I literally walk out of the gym, I open up my Instagram. And again, the very first picture on my Instagram is Megan Batoon eating out of the exact same box we were just talking about. I took a picture of the box to prove it. Yellow box with the old fashioned, I think it's Portos. And it's hard to see because the crack screen. She's eating out of the same box. So my trainer's like, he's in this now. He's in it. Oh my God. Speaking of my cracked screen, let me interrupt for a second because this was probably the most spooky one of all. I dropped my phone. I cracked the screen. I've been meaning to go get a new phone anyways. This is still the seven. So I'm too two generations behind. When I cracked my screen, I was like, I'm just gonna go get a new phone. So I went to my carrier, I got a new phone, and then I brought it home and I realized that I wanted it in a different color. So I was on my way to the Apple store because my carrier had just closed, the Apple store was still open for another hour. I was on my way to buy my second iPhone for the day and I got an email from Apple PR asking me if I could come in because they wanna gift me the new phone. Which by the way, yes, I'm very blessed, I'm very grateful for the things that I'm given, but right now, I would rather focus on the fact that I've, I've never been contacted by Apple PR. I didn't even know that Apple had PR. As I just broke my screen and I went and bought a new phone and then I was on my way to buy a second phone, Apple PR reaches out and asks me if I wanted a new phone? If you're not on board with me yet, unsubscribe. No, please don't. Please, please, please subscribe. Me again. So I went today to get the new phone, which by the way, guys, not sponsored, but I've not been this excited for a phone in like a decade. But I went and got my new phone today. And then I open up my time hop and it says this. <laughs> today? This one's a little silly, but I don't care. This is so random, but please bear with me. I was watching a Breakfast Club interview with Bow Wow. This is no shade to Bow Wow, but like you don't really hear his name a lot. People aren't really talking about Bow Wow except like the Bow Wow challenge. I'm watching it as I'm getting ready. I go meet Christine Sadako, Elle Mills for a pregame because we're going to a karaoke party, which I dressed up for by the way, and it wasn't a costume party. So <laughs> I get there and Christine put on Bow Wow. Of all the songs that Christine Sadelko could possibly play, she played Bow Wow. So then, so then I text Brian, my trainer. He's in this now. Listen how weird. I was watching this Bow Wow interview and then I came in and Christine put on Bow Wow. He was like, shut up. I'm at a restaurant right now and I'm sitting by the kitchen and I can hear them talking and they're all clowning on this dude, one of the workers, calling him Bow Wow because of the way his hair is. And again, he was like, I don't want to be a part of this. Take it back. And I was like, I can't. This one throws back to my video with the pizza, but please listen. This is going to be so hard to explain. So strap in for a second. I used to work with this girl named Stephanie at my old work called Pizza Joe's. Stephanie was my best friend. The entire time I worked there, we stayed in touch through all these years. This is my girl. So so I post this video and there's this other girl on Twitter named Violet. She tweets me a video saying that she took over somebody else's fan account. So somebody had a fan account of me and then they gave it to her. And there was old stuff retweeted on it about Pizza Joe's. The tweet was from me saying everybody decided to come into Pizza Joe's tonight and her fan account had retweeted it years ago. Like before I was ever on social media, somebody retweeted my account and she said, I thought that was so weird. So then she found out that the person's name was Stephanie because she looked at people who were replying to her and it was Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie. So then I post the video of the pizza and then she remembers like, Pizza Joe's, that's so weird. That was what that old account tweeted. And then Stephanie came into it and she was like, oh my God, that's Stephanie. So this girl somehow just got the account that somebody must have hacked Stephanie's Twitter account a while ago, made it into a fan page for me and then gave it to her. And then she finds out it's somebody named Stephanie and something about Pizza Joe's. And then I post the video right after this girl gets it about Pizza Joe's 
with Stephanie? Is anybody following me? And I recorded that video like a month ago and I just now posted it. So the fact that like of in this month, she got a hold of this Twitter account and I would edit and post the video at the same time that she would make all these connections. Are you following me? Oh, and that same day, I opened up my time hop and I said five years ago, completely unrelated, I've been introducing myself as Stephanie all day. But as I'm having all this conversation about Stephanie, 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 <sighs> okay, this one's hella gross, <laughs> but I tweeted, <laughs> stole my own joke from my time hop because I do that all the time. I care about the environment, I recycle my jokes. But I tweeted, retweet if you've ever painted nail polish directly onto your toe to hide the fact that your toenail is missing or something like that. And that day, <laughs> My pinky toe <laughs> fell off <laughs> after I tweeted it. I mean, it's still kind of there. I swear my pinky toe, <laughs> my toenail grows and then the top layer of the toenail like falls. I don't know. It's like, it's like a snake that sheds its skin, but on my toenail. This is a fun one. Okay, so I mentioned in my finally telling the truth video where I was confessing all this embarrassing stuff about myself that I've been using one of my followers Netflix accounts for years because my family's Netflix account locked me out because too many people were watching it at the time and I wanted to watch something so she let me borrow hers. Here's the spooky part. I finally decide, hey Gap, you're an adult. You make like a pretty good amount of money. You should get your own Netflix account. So I finally did it and I make my Netflix account after literally 27 years of not having my own Netflix account. I open up my Twitter. I can't believe this one. Right after I make my Netflix account, somebody tweets at me. First tweet I saw in my feed. Yo, Gabby, can I get your Netflix password? This one's dumb. I don't care. I open up my Facebook. First thing on my feed, family dispute. Is mac and cheese orange or yellow? One post down. One post down a picture of mac and cheese. That night, I go to the Hollywood Bowl. You can order food there. One of the options is mac and cheese. I never order mac and cheese, but I was with my, actually the kid who I bring to my, as my fake date to everything. And he was like, let's get mac and cheese. I was like, whatever. As we say, we want to order mac and cheese. A waiter comes up and gives the people sitting in our box directly behind us. And here's your mac and cheese ladies. Can we take your order? He says, I'd like the mac and cheese. And he said, sorry, that was our last mac and cheese. So I see all this stuff about mac and cheese and then he wants to order mac and cheese and as he says that he gives the people behind us mac and cheese and that was the last, literally the last mac and cheese. Why was my day so focused on mac and cheese? This venue holds 18,000 people and the people sitting directly behind us got the last mac and cheese the moment we order the mac and cheese right after I see two posts back to back about mac and cheese but it's fine, I'm fine. Anyways, I posted on Instagram my outfit. It was this brand called Outdoor Voices. So I tagged them because I love their stuff and I have a lot of it. And one of my best friends, Taylor, responds to it. She was like, this is so weird. I just learned about Outdoor Voices this morning and here this is. And I was like, oh cool. That day, I was walking down the street with my two friends from Canada and we're just going up and down Melrose, which I never do. And we walk by the Outdoor Voices store, which I didn't even know exist. I didn't know where it was. I didn't even know it existed. I thought they were just online retail. Like I I've never been to the store. So we walk by the Outdoor Voices store and I'm like, shut the fuck up. And then they go, oh my God, that's the outfit. We were both texting about your outfit that you were wearing this morning. Ah, I wear this outfit, I tag it on Instagram. Taylor texts me and she says, that's so weird. I just heard about them and then I see this picture. And then we're walking down the street, which I never do, with these two girls who that morning were texting about my outfit at that store. What? Speaking of Taylor, there's this photographer who I've known of for years. I met him really briefly at VidCon and I just randomly decided to message him and I was just like, hey, what's up? And we're talking a little bit and I had just posted a story of Taylor holding her dogs. And after we're talking, he responds to my story. He goes, how weird, I just met her and her two dogs at this coffee shop today. And I was like, wow, that's really weird that we would talk the day you meet my friend and I would post my friend that is weird, but it gets worse because I, I sent Taylor a voice message about it because I thought it was weird. She's like, who is he? And I said, he's a really talented photographer. And she goes, Gabby, I'm literally having a conversation right now about wanting to take photography more seriously and get back into photography. <sighs> So I was in traffic 
and there was this thing happening where you know when one lane closes and then there's a bunch of people in this lane and then people go into this lane to cut the whole lane and like the person that really should have been at the back of the line was actually now at the front of the line. I was thinking about how annoying that was and I was questioning to myself. I was like I, I want to be mad because this is annoying but also is that what you're supposed to do? Because I don't know what you're supposed to do because I do that sometimes but when I'm on the other lane I'm annoyed. <sighs> I get home. As soon as I open my Facebook, this girl from my hometown reposted a post. The guy had said, if there's a lane closure and you think you're going to cut all the way in front of the line when I've been sitting here in traffic, I will hit your car before I let you in. And she did this whole post about this is the reason there's traffic problems. If there's a lane closure, you're supposed to let people merge over. People like you are the reason that there's traffic backups and bottlenecking. But this is after I literally just got off the road and that's the first thing I see. See? Also speaking of Taylor, I haven't been getting my laser hair removal because it was summer and I was too tan and they can't do it if you're too tan. And I had just texted the guy being like, hey, I lost my tan, I can get laser hair removal. And then I was with Taylor and Taylor was like, I just got my first laser hair treatment. Ah! Okay, so <laughs> here's another one. I saw, I'm not gonna say who because I don't want you to be able to like go find these people I'm talking about. A YouTuber that you all know and love was arguing with this girl on Twitter about something and it turned into a really long exchange and I was reading the exchange and then I clicked the profile and I was like, oh my God, this is, it was somebody I used to be really good friends with. She was um, a pretty big Viner in, back in the day and now she does like her own shit. She's not really on social media anymore. I clicked her profile and I was like, wow, I haven't talked to her in so long. I wonder how she's doing. And then like an hour later, I open up my Twitter again and I go to my verify tab and she tweeted at me. <laughs> And it had nothing to do with anything. It was just I was stalking her profile. And I didn't click anything. I didn't like anything. I didn't tweet at her. It's just like she knew or something. This one's just really funny to me. So I was by my elevator. And <laughs> I heard this guy. You! By the elevator! By the elevator! And I was looking all around. I was like, where's this voice coming from? He's like, over here! On the roof! So I went over. And I looked over the ledge. And I looked over the roof. And there was this guy just chilling on the roof. And he's like, can you please help me? And I was like, how? And he was like, can you get me off the roof? And I was like, how did you get up there? So I go up the stairs. And on the, the roof entrance was like, do not enter. Alarm will sound. We'll be fined. Whatever. Like, don't go on the roof. So I open it. And he comes out. And I was like, how did you get up here? He's like, came out here to smoke a blunt. <laughs> And I didn't know the door was gonna lock behind me. So I was like, oh man, how long have you been up there? He's like, like two hours. I walk him down through the stairwell. I get off at my floor and he continues to his. And then I start hearing him pounding on the door. I go over and he's like, help. <laughs> and I was like, what's up? And he was like, I locked myself in the stairwell. <laughs> Anyways. That's not the spooky part. So I leave. I come home later, th later that night, way later. And I'm in the garage and I hear somebody go, excuse me, can you let me in? <laughs> And it was the same guy. He's very high, locked himself out again. I think he was staying with a friend so he doesn't have the main key you need because you need like five keys for my apartment building. But what are the odds that this guy would lock himself out twice in a day and both times it would be me who found him. There's so many people in my apartment building, nobody else found him. Now, there are a lot of instances, I think a lot of people experience, but for lately, it's just been very overwhelming. We're like, actually, this is weirder than it, than I let on. I was looking at a picture of Ryan Parma, he directs my music videos, and we wanted to go see Dear Evan Hansen. So I was looking at a picture of Ryan Parma, thinking, oh, I think Dear Evan Hansen's in town, we should go see it. And he texted me, wow, I was on his photo, something completely unrelated, and then he says, by the way, we have to go see Dear Evan Hansen. Fine, fine. But that stuff happens to everybody, right? But these are the ones that I think matter. If you made it to this point, thank you, God bless. So I wrote this song, and I'm really nervous for everybody to hear it. But I was talking to my producers, I'm like, I don't know if I can pull this off. And then I said, would Eminem like this song? Which doesn't make sense right now. But I said, my goal would be for Eminem to hear this song and respect it. And then I opened up my Instagram. <laughs> And the very first picture, at the very top of my feed, was that. But it's fine, I'm fine. Then, this is a different day, I'm driving, I'm looking at houses, and I'm playing one of my newer tracks in the car, and I'm like, there were a few different directions that we went with it. It was, are we gonna do this soft and gentle, a little bit indie, are we gonna do this a little bit poppy, or do we wanna take this in a punk rock direction? And to me, this song has always been punk rock. So my producers put it together, punk rock, and I'm just like, is this the right sound? Should I be doing a different sound? And one of the lyrics in the song is glue. And I'm thinking, is this how this song is supposed to live? And then as I hear the word glue, I look up and the street sign 
was Elmer Street. Elmer's glue. So for me, I was like, okay, that was a sign. <laughs> Clearly, same day, my real estate agent is just like talking to me about my music and stuff. She was telling me, cause it was her birthday, she was telling me what she did on her last birthday and her daughter took her to a Bruno Mars concert. And we were talking about how much she loves Bruno Mars and how much I love Bruno Mars and how I, th I think he's so amazing. As we pull up to this house that isn't my dream house, like I really am very strongly considering getting this house. We are like, we, you know, when we know it, we know it. Like the universe will let us know if we find the house. And we're talking about Bruno Mars and we pull in and Bruno Mars starts playing on the radio. And it wasn't a radio station she picked, it was just the radio. It's not like she was listening to Bruno Mars Sirius XM. We were just listening to the radio. As we pull into my dream house, talking about how much we love Bruno Mars. Anyways, the point was, for some reason, and this is what I'm just taking it as, and somebody else told me this too, I don't know if it's true or not, but I want to take all of these weird signs and synchronicities and messages as the universe telling me, you're good, homie. You're on the right path. You're one step ahead, you're going, you're right where you're supposed to be at all times. That's how I choose to take it, especially with the music ones that started happening. If you guys have your own suggestions, I really wanna hear you guys think about it. And also, I just wanna throw this in as like a bonus, cause I thought it was really weird and just a little too specific. It's Aquarius, why do you end up alone? And it's a girl with my haircut cutting her own hair. And I just felt really attacked. Anyways, how long is this video? I'm scared. Thank you if you watched this point. If you did, you must like me. Please subscribe. If you hate watched me, thanks. This is this week's showstopper of the week. You're the bomb. Thank you so much for the support. As always, I love you very much. Thank you for being a part of my family. I'll see you next time. Say you're talking to me, honestly.